family has been here in California for many generations and you have um, raised, homeschooled six children. Uh, and then you decided to enter public service. And, and what was the catalyst for that? Raising the children, raising the family is all service and very involved in community volunteer and church work. We just graduated Johnny from high school. He, yeah, he turned 16 and we finished homeschool high school. So there's so many uh, issues and needs in our in our state now that affect families. And this is the first time in California history that our population has been decreasing. And there's a lot of factors for that. And California is a great place to live, but I think that the people that are leaving are really a lot of families and families with children and um, families with businesses. So they're concerned about schools. They're concerned about um, affordability. And I want my own kids to stay with us in California. Both my parents and Ron's parents are still in the houses that we grew up in. And, you know, so we're not leaving, but we need to, like you were saying, public service. We need to do what we can to keep California a place where families can thrive. Yeah. I, I, I guess I'm a uh, Gen X, right? So I'm, I'm 44. And the idea of buying a home here just seems, for most, I would say, uh, very, very challenging. Very challenging. So you entered public service first in the city of La Crescenta, is that correct? Right, yes. I ran for council there. And what was um, that experience like? Oh, it was fun. It was interesting uh, because it was during, it was during uh, 2021. So people were still staying in their homes a lot, but I went door knocking anyway, and uh, people people would open the door, smile, and they they came out to vote for me. I won by historic margins because I want to serve. And I told them, you know, th we're going through a really hard time in our community and our state, our country right now. We can be out there serving and doing good. I always felt the best political situation is is local politics right where you're in, in your community and there's more impact and more direct feel and and influence uh, as as opposed to national or state level uh, so you were a city council person in la crescenta right and did you feel just really close to the community and close to your constituents you were just right at that level Right. Yes, yes. It's really, yeah, it's really fun to knock on the doors, talk to what, what's your concern? And our very first uh, open public meeting was a packed house, no standing room only, because this, the residents had a concern that was right in their backyard. And I went up there and I checked it out. I listened and they were glad that I looked at it in person. And we had a unanimous vote on the council at that meeting, listening to what the residents were really concerned about. I remember when I was a city councilman and the first issue, and it was like a big hot issue, was should we allow a dental office to be built in our community, in our neighborhood? And you know, this directly impacts people. Mm -hmm. And so this is what I liked about local politics is that things that directly in, impact people, they can go right to you and tell you what they feel. Right. And you have to react to it. Yeah, I'm just out in the front yard um, working in the right, garden, yeah. and they drive by, stop the car, and say, hey, my water bill is like this. What's going on? What can we do? Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. and you must feel proud to be in that position. Well, I'm really glad that I can help them. Yeah. And if I can't help them, I voice their concerns to the whatever the entity is that, that has the power to help. Both of you mentioned door knocking. I don't like, you know, okay, I understand what that means, but is this just a normal way of getting out to speak to potential voters? Or like who taught you? Like you're like, okay, I want to I want to serve the public. I want to run for this office. Like who goes how do you do you just go about and search that information on Google to somebody help you who's been there before? Like how does that process start? Well, to me it was just uh 
It was just natural, intuitive sense that if I want people to vote for me and they're my neighbors, they need to know me. And if I go to them, then I am making an effort of interest in them rather than just putting out an advertisement and say, uh, come to me if you're interested. And, you know, usually uh, most you get a very small percent of people coming when you just throw out a general advertisement and sit there and wait. But um, if you go to them, they see that you're interested in them and they'll share and they'll talk and they'll remember you and uh, show up. Yeah, you take a brochure mm -hmm. and you give it to them, tells about yourself. But yeah, you're right there, you can talk to them. Yeah, I think this has been a traditional part of, I'm, I'm gonna use the term politicking and politics even though I said there was a certain negativity that I attached to it, but it also describes the process, which is not negative. But uh, I think it's a traditional part of political life. You go out, you, you knock on doors and talk to, the, talk to your constituents, or, or in this case, talk to the electorate. You're, you're trying to get their vote. You want to get their vote. How many engage in conversation and how many just, you know, like don't want to speak with you? Because like the thought of knocking on doors is terrifying to me. <laughs> I, I, cause like I would imagine there's some rejection there. Right. And like, that's like, and also really you never difficult. know whether there's a dog in the yard. <laughs> so, so like, yeah, how many, how many people want to speak and, and how do you, um, overcome that? Or maybe you don't have a fear of rejection. Oh, well, rejection is always a bummer, but, um, but I enjoy people. I enjoy talking to people and when they open the door and I smile, they just, they, they feel a welcome towards me. And if they have an opinion, if they have a concern, or if they're suspicious, why are you knocking on my door? That's a, a conversation opener. So, mm. so I'm actually surprised how many people actually say thank you for running because they look at what's going on and they're frustrated. They feel powerless. And literally I'm one in a million. There's a million people in this district. I'm the, the only, the only one running, um, uh, <laughs> I'm the only one running in my party. And um, they want somebody to step up for them. 